Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is David Marpong from the Laser Physics and Nonlinear Optics Group at the University of Twente. Uh, and today, I'm grateful for the uh, opportunity provided by the um, organizer of the meeting to share our most recent results on integrated microphotonics spectral shaping. So, um, integrated microphotonics is uh, a rapidly emerging field. Um, where uh, RF signals are being uh, processed, manipulated uh, using optical components and techniques, and in particular using uh, photonic integrated circuits. Uh, so last year we uh, uh, put out a review paper um, uh, together with uh, collaborators from uh, University of Ottawa and then um, University of Valencia on um, uh, this particular to topic. So uh, what I'm showing here is uh, a figure from the paper uh, which is a canonical uh, topology of an integrated microphotonic system where we have a laser source, an optical modulator that uh, encodes the information uh, in the RF domain to the optical domain, a chip to process the signal and a photo detector to retrieve back the RF information from the optical signal. So I would like to draw your attention to this optical modulator. So optical modulation is ever present in uh, nearly all microphotonic systems. It's the first step um, that, as I mentioned before, encodes the RF signal to the optical domain. But then the significance of uh, optical modulator is beyond just encoding of information. Uh, if we look deeper that the type of optical modulation that we use in a microphotonic system dictates the system functionalities. For example, if you want to optimize a certain kind of uh, performance of an RF photonic filter or delay lines, you uh, better choose a certain kind of modulation like phase modulation or a single sideband modulation and so on and so forth. Um, and beyond that, uh, optical modulation also, if it's not done well, can be a massive source of uh, RF to RF losses, uh, nonlinearity, and eventually a degradation of signal to noise ratio and noise figure. So I cannot stress um, more the importance of the, this step, this optical modulator. But if you look at analog modulation in microphotonic system, um, then you can see that um, there's only a handful of ways of uh, encoding this RF information to the optical domain. Uh, basically, there are three types of uh, modulators that have been widely used in microphotonics, phase modulation, intensity modulation, and a complex modulator using dual parallel Massander modulator. So uh, the difference in these types of modulation is signified by uh, the complex optical spectrum synthesized as the output. For example, for a phase modulator, uh, you create a, a certain kind of optical carrier accompanied by two sidebands, and then the amplitude and uh, phase relation between these three waves determines the type of the mod modulation. Uh, for phase modulation, the two sidebands, for example, are out of phase, and then in the, at the end of the day, uh, in a photo detection process, what you will get is a mixing product between the sideband and the optical carrier uh, and the lower sideband and the optical carrier. And in this case, they will be uh, creating signals with equal amplitude but opposite phase. And that's why you cannot directly detect uh, phase modulated signal. Uh, it's a different story for intensity modulated signal uh, using Massander modulator, for example, that you have mixing products between the sideband and the optical carrier that are of equal amplitude and in phase. So they are constructively uh, um, adding or interfering. Um, and uh, the dual parallel Massander modulator, for example, gives uh, us a bit more flexibility in terms of tailoring the phase and amplitude relation between the, uh, the optical sidebands, for example, but they are still interrelated. And as I mentioned before, uh, particularly this phase and amplitude relation between these three uh, waves or components 
determines the quality of your uh, signal processing. For a filter, for example, it dictates the type of filtering, the rejection, insertion loss, and eventually noise figure of your filter. So um, it will be um, um, critical for microelectronic system to be able to synthesize a modulated spectrum that have a, a tailorable phase and amplitude relation between uh, the optical carrier and the side bands. Um, so this is one of the concepts that we want to push forward in this talk as well. So this is showing a cartoon of, again, an um, integrated microelectronic system consisting of the laser modulator, some signal processor on chip, and a photo detector. Um, if we take a look at the, 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 the signal flow across the system, you see that the laser creates an optical carrier and uh, there's an input RF signal to the modulator and this creates the modulated signal as I've shown before. But then in this case, instead of only having optical carrier and two side bands, you can also offer modulate the system to create a higher order side bands. Um, in this case, second order side band. And the paradigm here is uh, to uh, complex tailoring or spectral shaping of this um, uh, input spectrum to create modulation transformation. So if you twist uh, phase and uh, change the amplitude of the input uh, modulated spectrum, you can actually create a different modulated spectrum uh, at the output, and this is what we call modulation transformation. If we have this tailored uh, or a shaped spectrum uh, in the photonic chip sent to the photo detector, then you can create opportunities of optimizing different functionalities. For example, uh, optimizing a certain kind of filtering, RF photonic filtering uh, mechanism to create uh, or tailored uh, uh, waveform uh, generation in the RF using optical techniques. But you can also have opportunities to linearize the transfer function of your whole microphotonic system. So these are the four points that I would like to briefly touch upon in this presentation. So first, we start with the modulation transformation. The idea here is to have any kind of modulator at the input connected to an on-chip spectral shaper that synthesize any kind of modulator at the output free from the mod, uh, input modulation. So for example, you have a phase modulation, you can transform it to intensity modulation, uh, you can remove one of the side bands and have a single side band modulation, or you can synthesize a spectrum with arbitrary phase and amplitude relation between the uh, optical carrier and the side bands. So this is the work that was uh, presented at the post, as a post kind paper in the ACP conference last year, a collaboration between uh, my group and then the University of Sydney and then the Photonics Research Group in Ghent University. So what we did is that we built a silicon photonic circuit that consists of uh, a modulator and this on-chip spectral shaper. So how does it work? Um, this uh, uh, RF photonic spectral shaping or modulation transformation works in this way. Let's say you have a modulator that synthesizes optical carrier and two side bands. Uh, we send the modulated signal into a spectral D interleaver. What this uh, D interleaver does is to separate uh, one side band, in this case the upper side band, and isolate it from the remainder of the spectrum. Uh, so the spectral D interleaver has two outputs. The side band uh, that is being isolated is uh, routed to, in this case, the upper part. And in this upper part, um, the phase and amplitude of the side band can be tailored independently from the optical carrier and the side the other side band that is being sent to the lower path, right? Uh, and then uh, to enhance the capability of this uh, spectrum shaping, we also include a tunable fil filtering section uh, in the path of the optical carrier and the side band to implement RF photonic uh, filtering, as you can see later. So this newly shaped spectrum now is being added again on chip and sent to an on chip uh, photo detector. And in this case, uh, uh, depending on the programming of this circuit, 
you can create single side pan or you can twist the face of this isolated side pan to change from intensity modulation to phase modulation and vice versa. That's the idea. Uh, and then what we did is that we integrate all the critical components of this system uh, into a single uh, silicon chip um, where we have on-chip modulator, intensity modulator, and then uh, the spectral D interleaver we implemented into a Massander interferometer loaded with three rings. Um, uh, we have a tunable phase shifter and a attenuator to control the sideband phase and amplitude. And this ring resonator network is used to implement uh, RF photonic filtering. And all the signal is sent to the um, uh, on-chip photo detector and uh, partially tapped off to be inspected off-chip. So um, uh, this is just showing the, the components of this modulation uh, transformer um, chip. So the spectral D interleaver um, is, uh, response is shown here, uh, both the uh, simulated and the measured uh, response. So we have quite high um, rejection of around 50 dB of this spectral D interleaver. And then the ring resonators responses are shown here. The rings are uh, with 30 gigahertz uh, free spectral range. And then with um, Q of around 120,000. So how does it work? We test it uh, and then the first thing we do is uh, we try to convert modulation from a known modulation, intensity modulation, let's say into phase modulation and uh, the other way around. Uh, this is a setup where we uh, implement the testing and then the idea here is that let's say we use an external modulator which is an intensity modulator we want to operate the circuit to convert it to phase modulation and this is shown by this trace on the left input intensity modulation signified by a strong passband let's say is being converted into phase modulation where the transmission is low on the other hand if we replace this modulator with a phase modulation for phase modulator, you can also convert it to intensity modulation by twisting the phase. So this is the spectrum of a phase modulated uh, signal and an intensity modulated signal from the circuit. And as you can see that uh, apart from a slight shift in the central frequency because of uh, thermal crosstalk, the spectrum looks practically the same. And this confirms that indeed uh, the conversion is done solely by phase rotation uh, in the circuit because then uh, the spectrum doesn't carry the phase information of the side beds. So that work is uh, quite encouraging and then we try to find uh, uh, implementation of uh, RF photonic signal processing for that and we choose MW, uh, micro photonic filter as um, the, 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 the implementation. But before going uh, back into that experiment, I would like to explain uh, as, uh, how we can get micro photonic filtering out of your optical filter, right? The simplest way to do is to create a single sideband modulation, single sideband modulation uh, completely mapped the optical filtering response, for example, this kind of uh, notch response from a ring, for example, uh, uh, from the optical domain completely to the uh, radio frequency domain. Uh, that can also be done with a bandpass filter. For example, if you have a single sideband modulation, it's a bit com more complicated because then you need to isolate the sideband, filter it, and re-inject the carrier as a local oscillator, for example, to have the bandpass filter down converted to the RF domain. So these are the simplest way to implement my, microwave photonic filter. Uh, but uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, the, the group in uh, Sydney, where I was in uh, before, uh, found a way to do a very localized uh, modulation transformation solely for the um, aim of making a high quality microphotonic filter. Let me explain how it works. Uh, you encode your site then here, uh, my, uh, sorry, RF signals here into not one sideband but two sidebands and then you use ring resonator 
to convert modulation only at a very specific frequency. The way it works is that uh, for a ring resonator, uh, depending on the losses of the ring, you can control the uh, coupling between the bus waveguide and the ring, and you can access two regimes, the undercoupling regime and overcoupling regime. Uh, in terms of the transmission itself, they can be made to be rather similar, looking the same, um, with the same uh, transmission uh, depth, let's say, but then they're quite different from the phase point of view. In the undercoupling regime, you don't have phase inversion at the center of the resonance, while at the overcoupling regime, you have a pi phase inversion. This means that when you start aligning ring response at exactly the same frequencies from with respect to the carrier, you can attenuate one side then and the other with exactly the same attenuation, but then now with opposite phase in the center of the resonance. If you send this to the photo detector at the center of the resonance, you have uh, exactly destructive interference because of the pi phase inversion uh, due to the overcoupled ring resonator. So this means that you can amplify the rejection of your ring uh, that you obtain in the optical domain in the RF domain through destructive interference. This is uh, uh, it's a known technique that was first demonstrated in 2013, I think. Um, and um, in, in, in this way, you can have high rejection at the center of the resonance, but then nearly no attenuation at the passband of the filter. This works only for a uh, notch filter. So um, we have uh, uh, taken this... Uh, uh, concept um, into making an all optimized RF photonic filters where we uh, implement the concept and then combine it with a low biased intensity modulator. So uh, for some of you are not familiar with this low biasing intensity modulator with high power uh, amplification at the input of the modulator has been exploited to uh, limit the RF to RF losses in RF photonic link, uh, but also to reduce the noise figure of the RF photonic link. So um, because of uh, this technique, we can combine both uh, high um, resolution and high rejection filtering with um, low biasing. So if we take a look at the filter response that we got from this um, uh, circuit. So the circuit itself is a silicon nitride programmable circuit uh, made by Linux International in Enschede here in the Netherlands. Uh, you can see that you have uh, ultra high rejection filters, uh, but also really good passband performance. So there is no losses in the passband. Instead, you have an amplification. And you can extend this into a larger number of rings and you can make multi-band filters out of that. And if you take a look closer at the notch filter, the resolution is pretty high uh, because then the Q of these rings, of these low loss uh, silicon nitride rings are um, high as well, it's nearly 1 million. But things got more uh, intriguing, let's say, when we start inspecting the, the performance, signal performance in the passband. As I mentioned before, there is no loss in the passband, but instead an amplification. That's why if you put the wanted signal, let's say, as I uh, illustrate here, uh, with an input signal of 56, minus 56 dBm at the output, you have a 2 dB amplification, for example. And if you put an unwanted signal at the at the higher frequencies in this case, and you align your notch filter here, you can completely reduce the energy of this unwanted signal. And these filters also have a really good performance in terms of noise figure and uh, spurious-free dynamic range. So that is uh, the potential of spectral shaping implemented in uh, RF photonic filter. So we. Coming back to the experiment that I uh, shown before, um, we also implement the, the, the phase rotation and then the modulation transformation not using a ring, but a complete circuit in this case. So it's not only at the center of a resonance of a ring, but for a complete uh, side bands that we uh, change the modulation. Uh, in this case, for a traditional uh, 
filter where you have uh, two sidebands. You activate your circuit to block the this red noted sideband, let's say, and then you create a single sideband traditional filter. Um, a photonic filter and you can see because then we deliberately set the rejection of the filter to be pretty shallow you have a 7 dB rejection here once you activate your circuit to make this kind of phase cancellation filter as I mentioned before then you can amplify the rejection uh, to more than 30 dB so this is showing that the modulation transformation plus signal processing can be implemented uh, here on chip in the, in this work so um, we sort of um, recently extend this work um, also to work with a phase modulator for a phase modulator the problem is that there is no um, uh, bias so you cannot do low biasing with that and then you cannot have the advantage of uh, gain and noise figure as described in the previous work so the idea here is that um, we use three re ring resonators to do three different functionalities. And this is actually work that will be presented by my PC student, Okidaulai, in the Cleo Pacific Rim in a couple of weeks. Um, the idea is that uh, we use one ring to do modulation transformation. So we rotate the carrier um, to transfer from phase modulation to intensity modulation. And then we use the uh, amplitude response of the ring also to do carrier suppressions to emulate low biasing and we use the other two rings to do the sideband processing as i mentioned before to create this phase cancellation filter so the experiment results are shown here so without ring activated we have a pure phase modulation so low transmission and once the ring is used to rotate 90 degrees the face of the carrier then you can have a, a, a high or a strong transmission in the pass band. Um, and then the two rings uh, are now activated as notch filters. If it's uh, one ring, then you have one shallow notch. If it's two rings, then you have two shallow notch, notches, let's say. And then once we bring together this overcoupled and undercoupled ring at the two side bands, then what you get is a uh, ultra high rejection uh, filter with a strong pass band <clears throat> so uh, so that's about the filter and then finally i would like to talk about uh, dynamic dynamic range enhancement uh, using spectral shaping so as i mentioned before uh, there's also an opportunity to uh, have a linearized uh, response of a microphotonic link. And linearity of microphotonic link is typically characterized by intermodulation distortion and spurious free dynamic range. So quickly, just to explain that, if uh, you do a two-tone test, so you put uh, two fundamental signals at um, slightly shifted uh, frequencies at the input of the microphotonic link, what you get is an RF spectrum like this, where you got back your two RF signals, but then accompanied by intermodulation distortion. This is because of third order nonlinearity in the system. Uh, typically, this third order intermodulation distortion falls very close to your signal, so you cannot filter them, and they are very strong. So if you uh, uh, plot the input power with respect to the output power in decibels, you see that the fundamental signal will grow with a slope of one because it's a linear, uh, but the intermodulation distortion grows much faster with a slope of three. So a measure of linearity is called spurious free dynamic range or SFDR and it's defined as the um, signal to noise ratio where the intermodulation distortion is still below the noise floor, right? And we would like to improve that via spectrum shaping. Is it possible? Yes, this has been proposed by a group from uh, China uh, some years ago. And then the idea is that by uh, filtering, complex filtering of the optical um, spectrum, uh, one can identify that uh, which components that leads to intermodulation distortion and if you filter that you can have reduction in the IMD3 
at the output of the of the uh, photonic link, and this will also result in an enhancement of spherospheric sphere dynamic range. So, uh, but this was implemented using a wave shaper, which is a, a very versatile device, liquid crystal on silicon based uh, device, but then it's rather bulky. And we would like to ask the question whether we can integrate that into a photonic chip using ring resonators, for example. So what we did is that we uh, perform simulations. Right now, experiments are being performed as well. We cascade three ring resonators. And the message here is that to be able to to uh, linearize the response of the photonic link. In this case, uh, we need to impart phase and uh, amplitude uh, filtering to the carrier band. So uh, signals around the carrier and signals around the second order side band at the higher side uh, order, uh, sorry, at the upper side band and the lower uh, second order side band. So we look to try to do this with uh, optical ring resonator because uh, ring resonator is a complex filter as we've seen before. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, transmission is accompanied by phase uh, modification. So uh, we run an optimization algorithm to find the correct phase shifts uh, different phase shift that we have to put in the carrier and the second order side bands and also the amplitude uh, reduction for these three wave components. Um, and this is the result of the simulation. Uh, indeed, that we can choose uh, the unoptimized phase shift and uh, amplitude to lead to more than 23 dB, uh, 22 dB reduction of the intermodulation distortion. And right now, we are trying to verify this through the experiments. And then uh, one final note is that uh, this kind of technique can also be exploited to uh, synthesize RF waveforms. This is a result that we published also uh, in uh, collaboration with the group in uh, Eggleton Group in Sydney, uh, where um, uh, ring resonators are used as a complex filter to put correct coefficients uh, at different frequency uh, components of the modulated signal. Uh, which later on will be sent to the photo detector and then sum to create uh, waveforms that is ranging from um, uh, triangular or sawtooth or um, um, square waveforms. So this is also an ability of uh, spectral shaping that uh, can be exploited. So as a summary, uh, I hope that we uh, can convince you that RF photonic spectrum carries really critical information of your system uh, and uh, paying attention to that and then uh, giving uh, capabilities of uh, programmably uh, shaping the spectrum can lead to advanced uh, optimization of microphotonic uh, system. Uh, this is, will be very critical to create cascadable multifunction microphotonic circuit where in the middle of the circuit you need to change modulation um, um, spectrum without going back to your modulator. Uh, and then you can cascade systems where each of one has an uh, optimized input modulation. And finally, to put things uh, together inside uh, a single chip, you can also create not only a performing uh, microphotonic uh, circuit, but also an ultra linear and low loss and hopefully also low noise uh, integrated microphotonic uh, system at the same time. So I would like to thank you for your attention and um, I'll be happy to take questions.